Rachel Higgins, she's only 5'11", a little bit undersized in the middle, but she's getting the job done. She was the WAC MVP. And really for Bakersfield, the difference in their team and the way they progress through the season has been their defense. So that's going to be the key for them. The Roadrunners, they know they have nothing to lose, but the number one seed, Stanford, has never lost in the first round. Can they keep that streak going? Or will Bakersfield run away with the upset? We'll find out for you. Starting lineups and set number one, it's round one of the NCAA tournament right here on Pac-12 Networks. Back inside Maples Pavilion on the campus of Stanford University as we take a look at the starting lineups for both sides, Bakersfield and Stanford. And a little more experience and size for the Stanford Cardinal, Holly. For sure, led by senior Morgan Bocather, who's been awesome on the right side for Stanford all season long. And on, for Bakersfield, Danica Youngblood leads the team in kills. She's five foot seven, left side hitter, big jumper, but high airs if she gets in trouble. Those are the starting lineups presented by Tasha Kara. And this is the first round of the NCAA tournament. And for John Dunning, it's not his first rodeo. That is for certain. In his 14th season as the head coach of the Stanford Cardinal. A couple of championships under his belt here as their head coach. He also took a couple as the head coach at Pacific for 16 seasons. And they would love to maybe get a seventh this year if they can, but a long way to go. And this is where it starts against Giovanna Mello in her first season as the head coach of Bakersfield, but a lot of experience. Six seasons as the head coach at Western Nebraska Community College, and her record was stupendous, 262 and 20 while she was there. And she's gotten this team completely turned around. Well, she said she came in late, didn't really get an opportunity to recruit, but brought in her setter of Brazilian Louisa Martins from Nebraska Community College, excuse me, Western Nebraska Community College. So she said it's been fun. This team plays with a lot of passion and their defense has improved tremendously and that's why they are in the tournament. Polar opposites really, these two teams, the first time to the NCAA tournament. And this is a program for Bakersfield that hasn't been division one for very long since 2007. They were division two before that. How about the Cardinal though? They and Penn State, Holly, the only two teams that have been to the tournament every single year. It's impressive. Stanford, obviously the top notch program in the country along with Penn State. And then for Bakersfield, they talked to the coach Giovanna Mello and she said, you know what? Prior to this season, our goal was just to qualify for the WAC tournament. We weren't thinking NCAAs but we kept improving as a team. They finished third in the regular season, but they went through the WAC tournament and ended up the champions, and they are here to see if they can make some history. And they know it's not gonna be easy, but they were very loose before the match, and they said they knew they had nothing to lose. They're just gonna go out and play some of their best volleyball, or so they hope. And they get the free ball here as set one is underway. The slide to Sydney Haynes, the block by the Cardinal waiting. Little bit of a shaky start for Stanford, unable to transition some balls, but Brittany Howard with a big block to score the first point. Inky Ajanaku will come in. 6'3 junior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And there you see Kelsey Humphreys, who's checked in for the serve. Quick swing there from Molly O'Hagan. We talked about her in the open, a player and one of four seniors for this Bakersfield team, but she's a player whose numbers have really become consistent. And according to her coach, it's because she's playing beach volleyball in the off season. It's really improved her all around game. That's something that I think you hear so often is what that sport, what the sand will do for you. And you know a little something about that and the swing there and the finish off the block. It's Kelsey Sawyer. Kelsey Sawyer makes the big block her friend, Point Bakersfield. 5'10 junior out of Temecula, over a thousand career kills coming into this match and uses a block. Back to serve now is Sydney Haynes, the red shirt freshman out of Vancouver, Washington. A Jonaku quick in the middle off the block and it'll go to Stanford. In the middle attack for Stanford, we talked about it all season long. That's their big advantage. They handle the ball well and they're able to run two of the best hitters in the country percentage wise, Inkia Jonaku and Moretta Lutz. Yeah, you see so much strength throughout, especially the Pac-12 conference on the pins, but for Stanford, their strength truly has been in the middle. And right outside that time, though, it's Brittany Howard. Number 16 in white, Brittany Howard elevating, taking advantage of the smaller blocker in front of her. 
Two-time All-Pac-12 honorable mention just named this year for the second year in a row. Set by Martin. She goes to the middle, and there's the block of Stanford in the middle. Bakersfield trying to get something going in the middle, but Inkia Janaku way over the net for Stanford. Watch this block. The hands way over, nowhere to go for Molly O'Hagan. Molly O'Hagan, the set way outside. How about the service? Ace Morgan Bocather gets her 15th on the season. At this level, serving is the name of the game. Every coach talks about it, serve and pass. Giovanna Mello and Bakersfield want to try to slow down the Cardinal. They're down by five. Rivalry Games brought to you by... Pac-12 Women's Volleyball is presented by Tachikara. We've got the ball, you bring the game. You see Maples Pavilion, and uh, it's been a little rainy here in Northern California, but it has not kept the crowd away, and for good reason. The number one seed, the top seed, Stanford Cardinal, getting things going here in the first round as they host Bakersfield. Krista Blunk along with Holly McPeak, and this matchup, a lot of people may just count Bakersfield aside, and you can never look past anyone, but this is a great start for the Cardinal. It's exactly what you have to do against a team like Bakersfield. You, you can't allow them to really get an opening, but a good timeout for Giovanna Mello's team. And Kelsey Sawyer with her second kill of the night. Number seven on the left side. High hands cross court for Bakersfield. I think Stanford's been waiting for this time of the year all year long. We had their match September 5th playing against Penn State. This is a hungry team who has been waiting for this moment to start all season long. You're absolutely right. This is a Stanford team that made it to the regional final last year. They faced Penn State. They lost that one in five. And John Dunning, the head coach, said that really motivated this team. It started last spring. It went through summertime. And it's prepared them for where they are right now. Just one loss on the season. It went to the number five team, Washington. And there's Bakersfield again, though, off the block. They are not going away. Well, that's smart coaching. Danica Youngblood, number one in blue, going high off the hand. Stanford's got a huge size block. If Bakersfield is smart, they can use that to their advantage. Stanford just impressive numbers in so many different areas as Burgess had to take some off. The overpass and Ajanaku with the finish. Well, that's a smart swing by Jordan Burgess. Keep it in play. Let Bakersfield have an opportunity, and there's an overdig where Inky Ajanaku wrist snap, easy kill for Stanford. Makes it look so easy, and back to serve. It's Kyle Gilbert, one of just two seniors for this Stanford team. There's the hops, the big swing by Youngblood. It just goes long, but you can see the athleticism and from the senior, very athletic, leads this team and kills at almost four per set. And she was first in the whack in that category. There's Gilbert, great numbers for her. One of two captains for the Cardinal. Lutz just waiting at the net. Again, the passing game gonna be so crucial for Bakersfield if they're gonna have a chance. And Kyle Gilbert coming out strong for Stanford, really putting the pressure on Bakersfield from the service line. It's so important to set the tone right at the beginning of the match like that. Gilbert, an all Pac-12 honorable mention member this year. The block just goes wide. It'll go to Bakersfield. Danica Youngblood, number one in blue with her second kill, using the big block. Look at those big hands way over the net. They've got to turn their hands back into the court. So that's a Stanford point instead of a Bakersfield one. Back to serve Luisa Martins, the junior setter out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Outside to Burgess, big swing, and she finds the back line. Stanford is able to get that ball fast out to the pin, and Jordan Burgess, huge. There's only one blocker in front of her. Huge advantage to the hitter in that situation. So many options for the Cardinal. We talked about that balance prior to the start of this one. What an advantage to have so many options, and Gilbert tried to save it, but couldn't. It'll go to Bakersfield. 13, Sydney Haynes in blue, the biggest player for Bakersfield. Redshirt freshman middle blocker from Vancouver, Washington with the block. Redshirted last season. She's the only player at 6'2", the only player for Bakersfield over six feet. But they are a very athletic team. Outside big swing from Sawyer. 
pass off the mark from the Cardinal. It'll go to the Roadrunners. Can we talk about Kelsey Sawyer's arm? Number seven right there just has a cannon for an arm. I love it. Named the all WAC tournament team. Third kill on five swings, hitting 600 for Bakersfield. She's a player that's been a little streaky for Bakersfield. And how about the quick there to Moretta Lutz? That's what we talk about when we talk about Stanford. Middle attack, Moretta Lutz. That's her only her first kill on two swings, hitting 500. But definite advantage at that 6'8 size when there's only a 5'11 blocker in front of you. Well, you got to take advantage of that. Lutz on the first team, all Pac-12 this season. And the lift called against the Cardinal, and Bakersfield's starting to settle in a little bit. Bakersfield is scrappy. They've got heart. They have nothing to lose. And, and Coach talked about how loose they were before the match. They're like, hey, we're in the NCAA tournament. Nothing to lose. Let's go on and have fun. There you saw Giovanni Mello, a former setter for Arizona State a couple of seasons, and catching the back line there to go back to the Cardinal. Brittany Howard has been awesome with her third kill on four swings already. Brittany Howard, a player that John Dunning said is really on the rise. He felt like her game was really starting to come together. I think it's been a little up and down this season compared to last year. But more teams know about Brittany Howard this year than they did last year. A John Aku right at the block and right back at her. That's a momentum shifter for the Roadrunners. Number 15, Molly Hagen. We talked about her at the top of the show in the middle. Stands her ground. Good blocking technique in the right spot. Point Bakersfield. You mentioned that she played sand, and it's because of that play. They said her lateral movement has improved so much this year. There's Howard again. The up from Alvidrez. Sawyer had to hustle to get to that one. Back set to Bo Cather and just missing long. And she wanted the touch but won't get it. And it'll go back to Bakersfield. Bakersfield fighting hard defensively, keeping the ball alive. This time Morgan Bo Cather tries to hit that corner, just missing that by a centimeter long. Pass from Burgess. Ajanaku takes some off. O'Hagan. Maddie Bug, a little frustration sends that one back over. And just missing long is Kelsey Sawyer. Still, Stanford looks a little bit nervous, but this is what happens the first round. I mean, it's a process, it's a journey. You have to win the six matches to win the title, and this is part of it, the challenge that Bakersfield is presenting. So it will go to Bakersfield, and Maddie Bug coming over, talking to the official John Dunning up, saying, what was the call? It must have been a touch because the ball was hit long. Bo Cather had already worked her way back. And instead, it's a serve from Sydney Haynes. The tip from Bo Cather, the pancake from Youngblood. And just too much the block picking up for the Cardinal. Good hustle, though, from the Roadrunners. Danica Youngblood with a perfect pancake. One hand laid out on the ground. The ball hits the top of your hand, keeps it alive for Bakersfield. Back set, the slide to O'Hagan. Off the block, nobody there for the Cardinal. It'll go to Bakersfield. I love the way the Bakersfield's playing right now. They're playing loose. They're going for it. They feel like defensively they can hang. And, and right now Stanford's passing the ball too far off the net to run the offense they want to run. Aaron Riley, one of four seniors in to serve. We saw them in warm-ups, Holly, and they were definitely very calm, very relaxed, not overexerting by any means. And there's the big hops from Danica Youngblood off the block. Danica Youngblood elevates. She's five foot seven, but look how high she gets hammering through the Maddie Bug Inky Ajanaku Stanford block. And John Dunning wants to talk things over. Just a two point lead, a big run for Bakersfield. Giovanna Mello called a timeout early on and then really settled her team down. It's been impressive what they've done since then. Well, that's the important thing. That's her job as a coach, but I think Stanford has to start focusing on the little things, discipline blocks so they're not getting tooled, closing the seam, doing the little things is what gets you a victory against a team like Bakersfield. John Dunning's team, they've had quite an impressive season. Take a little review of just what this number one seed has done. Very impressive start, 
28-0 as they started the season. Their best start ever. They only lost their second-to-last match, and it was up at Washington Holy. That was a tough road trip for them. It was, but I think sometimes a loss in, in the regular season is a good reminder, refocuses you, and, and reminds you where you might be vulnerable. You want to learn that before the NCAA comes. But you and I were here on September 5th for that Penn State match, and then the next night against Illinois. So... You know, we've seen them play consistently good all season long, but I think their defense and their consistency has been fantastic all season long. Their numbers have been phenomenal. 17 of their 29 wins have been against ranked opponents. Just crazy numbers for them. And we mentioned the only loss was at Washington, and you knew that wouldn't be easy. They, as a program, have won 104 tournament matches. That's more than any other program out there. And they are tied with Penn State with six national championships. And they would love to break that this year, but there's a lot of impressive programs out there. Not going to be easy. Pancake and Hustle there from Bakersfield. And they will give the free ball. Howard, hard off the block, catches the line. And Bakersfield hanging tough. Bakersfield playing with passion. Passion is in Portuguese how you say passion, and that's what Giovanna Mello told me before this match. This team plays with passion, and you see it. There's some fantastic defense and a big block. I love that. The coaching staff speaking Portuguese, some of the players as well, and you were throwing some of your Portuguese out there. Hey, it's not often I get to use it. <laughs> I decided to go talk to one of the other teams <laughs> while you guys were, were doing that. But very impressive. And Stanford now, a two-point lead here in set one, and it's been a good one. Bakersfield was able to settle down and bring in their game. The WAC champions, again, finished third in the regular season but went through the WAC tournament. Missouri-Kansas City, who won the regular season title, was upset by Seattle U, and that ended up being the team that this Bakersfield team Faced, and that one just going long, it's going to go back to the Cardinal. If you look at the stats, Bakersfield is, is really playing nice defense. They're holding Stanford to a 130 hitting percentage. Stanford averages 316 on the season, so those are low numbers for Stanford. There's Youngblood again. You're right, the Cardinal usually holding their opponents to 176. This Bakersfield team, though, playing very well here in set one. Big hole in the Stanford block. That's what I talked about, discipline. You have to focus on the little things. Getting the job done, pressing your hands over the net, turning your hands back into the court to get focused at this level. Burgess, hard shot there off the block and enough on it to get the point. Jordan Burgess has been playing extremely well, especially the second part of the Pac-12 season. I felt like her offensive numbers really improved. And I think that came because Stanford was controlling the first contact better, able to run that fast offense out to the pin. And Burgess, 16 double-doubles on the season. Pass a little off the mark. Martin's able to handle it. And then on the other side, the Cardinal were just waiting. That time, Matty Bug way over the net. Moretta Letts on the assist for the Stanford block. Sophie Fleming is checked in now for Bakersfield as Gilbert goes back with the serve, and it just goes long, so it'll go back to the Roadrunners. Fleming will check out, and coming back in is Sydney Haynes. First time to the NCAA tournament for this Bakersfield team. The quick to Lutz, and really no answer for that. I don't think many teams are going to have an answer for that, though, Holly. No, but credit Kyle Gilbert, the libero for Stanford, with a perfect pass right in Maddie Bug's hands. Maddie Bug delivers it to Moretta Lutz. Stanford point. Serve from Bug. Tough set from Martins, and there's Youngblood again. Danica Youngblood, five foot seven, senior outside hitter from Salt Lake City, Utah. She is elevating. Leads this team in almost four kills per set. She transferred from Western Nebraska Community College a couple of seasons ago, and now her former coach there, Coach Mello, is her coach now. Four players actually on this Bakersfield team followed their coach, or came in even a couple before that, as the Cardinal take that one back. Another set to the middle, Moretta Lutz, and then 
Louisa Martins digs it, just unable to control it for Bakersfield. Lutz is so tough. Fourth in the nation in hitting percentage. Slide to Haynes. The block was there, and it's a point to the Cardinal. Very disciplined block by Brittany Howard, number 16. Moretta Lutz on the assist, but Brittany Howard way over the net for Stanford. And Bakersfield wants the timeout. They're going to try to slow the Cardinal down if they can, but not easy when they get rolling. And with Moretta Lutz at the front, it's a good rotation for the Cardinal. Well, I've been impressed with the way that Bakersfield is competing with this Stanford team. They're not intimidated. They're digging balls. They're attacking. They're using the size of Stanford to their advantage when they can. We mentioned that Stanford, along with Penn State, the only two teams that have been to the NCAA tournament all 34 years and the last eight seasons, this is how they finished things off. Last year, we mentioned making it to the regional final. They have been in the national championship match 14 times, the national semifinal 18 times. But it's been a while. It's been a while since they've seen a championship come through. Well, I think Stanford has a very special group this year, and I think this could be the year. I think every player is an offensive weapon, and then the ball control, the defense, the experience, the motivation, and the chemistry of this group are all working in Stanford's favor. John Dunning, I know he knows it. This has been a very special team. Six NCAA titles. He's been part of two of those. Don Shaw, the former coach, four championships. And there you see those numbers. And they have the most tournament wins of any program out there. How about the conference as a whole? Ten teams, a Pac-12 record, but also an NCAA record, just making ten teams in and doing very well. Well, so all, all the Pac-12 coaches told us all season long, this is the deepest, most talented Pac-12 we've seen in a long time. So impressive. And there you see Jordan Burgess, one of many in the junior class, that talented junior group that came in, the number one recruit class in the nation. And you can bet that they would love to make it to the finals and bring home Another championship, and out of the timeout, there's Bakersfield again. So every time Giovanna Mello calls the timeout, she's able to settle her team down. And again, number seven, Kelsey Sawyer. Five kills on 13 swings for Bakersfield. <laughs> Bo Cather comes flying in and finds the opening. Nobody there for the Roadrunners. Morgan Bo Cather has a whip of an arm, number three right there in white from the right side. She gets on that ball quick, hammering it straight down for Stanford. One of just two seniors. She's got career highs in all of her numbers this year. A really solid senior season for Morgan Bocather. You always love that. See a player finish strong. And just a little too much there was Molly O'Hagan. Bakersfield trying to run that middle. Just a little bit of a misconnect trying to get on top of that ball. There's Kelsey Humphreys in again. Freshman out of Newport Beach. And the backup setter for the Cardinal, and that serve just goes long. Well, I like that Coach John Dunning for Stanford is using more players. He's using Kelsey Humphreys, the backup setter, very talented setter. Her mom was an All-American setter, Wendy Rush here at Stanford, but great ball control player on the floor for Stanford. Yeah, it's not easy with a setter that you're behind in Maddie Bug to get some minutes and some time. And that shot there, a close one, but by Ajanaku, it goes wide. Inky Ajanaku hammered that ball. Just could not get all the way on top of it, hitting it cross court wide. Haynes with the serve. Burgess. Nice up there from Alvidrez, the libero. A tough one for Bug to get to, but somehow got there. Howard, little tip. Somehow, Bakersfield keeps it going. Bo Cather, almost the same spot. She's putting a dent over there. That's the same spot. Morgan Bo Cather gets her arm up so quick and snaps down on that ball for Stanford from the right. She is dangerous. Set point for the Cardinal. With Bo Cather back in the serve. Sawyer hard off the block, and Bakersfield stays alive. Kelsey Sawyer with her sixth kill. What an arm. Her mom, Sherry, played volleyball at the University of Houston. 
Justin Sawyer, though, from Temecula, California. Bump set out to Howard and off the net. The block was waiting, but I'm not quite sure if that one even made it over. It's going to stay with Bakersfield. No, that ball did not clear. Bakersfield fighting to stay alive right now. Set point number three, this crowd on their feet. And a little antsy, I'm sure. Ajanaku in the middle. Big swing from Youngblood. Tough set, and O'Hagan has to send it over. Ajanaku, that time connects. Not that, completely, but she'll take it. No, Stanford pressing a little bit, but Bakersfield's doing a good job challenging the Stanford Cardinal team, making them a little uncomfortable. The Roadrunners really playing loose, nothing to lose, and for the Cardinal, maybe a little tight, but nonetheless, they get set number one, and a big finish from Inky Ajanaku. Number one, Stanford, up one set to none. This Pac-12 Volleyball Time in a long time. Utah, impressive season with some big wins over ranked opponents. USC snuck in with a tough early season going. And then UCLA, Arizona State, Colorado, Arizona, who lost tonight to BYU, and the Oregon Ducks. And then there's the Washington Huskies. They're playing right now also. So many teams have gone on, they have advanced, and then we have the Stanford Cardinal, 10 teams. It's a record for the conference, it's a record nationally. They, they broke a record last year with nine teams in this year. They were able to get 10, and there you see Stanford, as far as championships go, they have six, UCLA behind them with four, and then SC with three, and Washington with that one championship. And Washington playing at home, they will also host the regional as they held the national semis in the finals last year. It just could not get the title, and we are going here in set two, and Stanford takes the first point. That's Morgan Bocather's third kill. She's getting going for Stanford. I think Stanford's going to be a little bit more relaxed and a little bit more disciplined going forward from this set. Yeah, Holly, no matter what your seed is, no matter what your record, there's a lot of pressure when you come into the tournament and maybe sometimes a little more pressure on these top seeds. Especially with all the expectations on this group, the desire, this group wants it bad. And, and you know, nerves are natural. They have been so motivated. They have definitely, since last year, losing to Penn State in that regional final. Could not wait to get back to this point. And the block, though, from Bakersfield was there that time. Sydney Haynes shutting down Lutz. They didn't have an answer for Lutz in set number one. Well, they're, they're double blocking. They're respecting the middle blockers from Stanford. That time, Sydney Haynes with an assist from Molly O'Hagan for the Bakersfield block. Red shirt freshman back to serve. Is that time they go outside to Bocather and she's able to finish. I feel like that's four kills in a row for Morgan Bocather, who's been fantastic from the right. They really can't get on her fast enough with that quick arm swing. She is fast. Quick arm by the senior captain. <laughs> Sawyer had to take some off the block, read it the entire way, and it looks like the Cardinal are enjoying themselves a little bit more here in this set. Watch this ball by Morgan Bocat. Their sharp angle, the block jumps out wide and she takes advantage of it. She read that one perfectly and off the block there and right at us. Good hustle by the Cardinal. I think that Brittany Howard was gonna save me on that one, but I'm not positive. No, she did not care about you. She was <laughs> going was for the ball. I'm going to try to think the other way. She saw one <laughs> thing, the ball. She is focused. Nonetheless, it goes back to Bakersfield. There's Aaron Riley, senior defensive specialist out of Rancho Cucamonga. Howard takes a little bit off. Bump set out to Youngblood, so close to the net, and a net violation against Bakersfield. It'll go to the Cardinal. <laughs> Let's see, off the block. Do you see her even look at you? No. Yeah. She doesn't even know. I don't even know if she's just on she knows this is on TV tonight. She was No, she And that's that's the way it should be. <laughs> Only a victory on her mind. And that is a good thing. 
Quick swing there from Youngblood. And it just won't make it over. And it'll go to the Cardinal. I feel like Bakersfield's come down a little bit with their intensity and Stanford stepped it up. Humphreys back in to serve. Back set to O'Hagan, the block sends it to the back and it'll stay in, point to the Cardinal. Stanford started off set one in a similar fashion and then a timeout was called by Bakersfield and they were able to regroup and Giovanna Mello is gonna try to do the same thing here. Inke Janaku making her presence felt at the net for Stanford. One of the best blockers in the country pushes her hands way over. Back at Maples Pavilion, the Stanford Cardinal took set number one over Bakersfield, and they are up five here in set two. And we mentioned there are many other Pac-12 programs playing tonight. Washington, the number three seed, took set one over New Hampshire, and they are up pretty handily in set two as well. That's a tough place to go play. John Dunning found that out. Second to last match of the season as Washington gave them their first loss. But I'm with you, Holly. Sometimes you'd definitely rather get that in the regular season than find out the hard way in the tournament as, oh, the timeout, Inky Ajanaku gets the kill. Stanford definitely looking much more smooth like themselves. Good connection with setter Matty Bug and Inky Ajanaku on that last Stanford swing. Cardinal had to watch LMU and Michigan State prior to this one. And LMU was able to regroup after going down two sets to none as O'Hagan gets the kill for Bakersfield. Good so slide kinda... swing off one foot by Molly O'Hagan. Hard cross court Bakersfield point. There's Michigan State taking a look to see who they will face. Tomorrow night we will have that match for you here on Pac-12 Networks. And Michigan State was able to hold on. LMU went on a little bit of a run. They took set three, and then finally Michigan State came back in set four to finish things off. And a big swing there from Youngblood. Again, off the block, gets the point. Danica Youngblood, number one right there in blue, elevates. This is her sixth kill high off Morgan Bocather's hands. Senior out of Salt Lake City led the whack in kills per set. Averages about four per set. She had 15 in their win against Seattle U in the WAC championship. But that time, too far off the net, the block was there for the Cardinal. Inky Ajanaku, Morgan Bocather for Stanford, way over the net, just nowhere to go. Morgan Bocather looking over to the sideline to see what the call is for the serve. Youngblood again off the net and the block again there for Stanford. That time Maddie Bug number 22 in white and Inkia Jonaku. Look at the block. They close the seam. Beautiful Stanford point. Johnson off the slide. Free ball over to Bakersfield. They'll go to Johnson again. And Gilbert keeps it up. Bug to a Jonaku in the middle, and there was nothing Aaron Riley could do on the other side. Beautiful transition offense by Stanford. Give, give credit to Megan Johnson. Two beautiful slide hits down the line. Kyle Gilbert digging those balls for Stanford to keep them in that rally. So another timeout called by Bakersfield. The row runners trying to regroup and get themselves back into this one, but the Cardinal have just had so much going at the net. When you can turn a long rally into an offensive attack out of your middle, that's a good thing, and Stanford does that on the third time across, able to put it away. Earlier tonight, prior to this match, it was Michigan State. We mentioned they were the winners over LMU. 
and they had a big presence. This is a team that was injured earlier in the season. Holly, they were a bit of a young team, so it was kind of a roller coaster, but as of late, they've really been putting it together. Michigan State is a very physical team, a lot of size, and probably one of the very best liberos in the country in Corey Moster. She was very impressive and got her hands on everything, and the size and the presence of Michigan State at the net really stood out to me and you can tell they're starting to enjoy each other. They're starting to get a rhythm as a team. Michigan State is dangerous. They're young, but with the senior libero keeping the ball alive, a freshman setter who I was very impressed with, they have a good chance to be a spoiler for somebody. They do. Got the at-large out of the Big Ten. And talk about tough competition, probably the second strongest conference in the nation behind the Pac-12 is the Big Ten. So they got the at-large, had a solid RPI, very tough non-conference schedule. And they are awaiting the winners here for tomorrow night. And how about the dump? Luisa Martins takes that ball over, the junior center out of Brazil. Smart decision to throw it down. The blocker was moving out to block the hitter. No one in front of her, throw it down for Bakersfield. She transferred from Western Nebraska Community College, played for Coach Mello there. She was a second team junior college All-American. And the Jonaku just goes wide on that shot. That's the second time she's hit that particular ball out. Just not getting a good enough wrist snap on that cutback. She has such a great wrist either way. It keeps the Roadrunners alive with Martins back to serve. Brittany Howard, big swing there. How about the up from Alvy Drez? And taking a little too much off. The block was there for Stanford. A lot of Brittany Howard, number 16 for Stanford on that play. Started with a perfect pass. She gets dug, but then ends the rally with a Stanford block. She is a player that John Dunning had said that his team needed to get into some better situations. They maybe hadn't been looking to her quite enough. Big swing there from Youngblood and got every piece of that. High flying Danica Youngblood finding a way for Bakersfield to put that ball away. She was part of this program last year as well before Coach Mello got here. Really got every bit of that. And Jolene Shepherdson, now the head coach at San Jose State, was the head coach of Bakersfield. And then Mello came in, sort of picked things up where things were left off. A 21 win season for Shepherdson last year. So maybe a program on the rise in the whack. For sure. Especially with that coach right there. Started in the junior college ranks at Western Nebraska, then transferred to Arizona State, was a setter there in two seasons for the Sun Devils. And off the block is Sawyer. She keeps rolling. I asked Giovanna Mello, what got you into coaching? She said, well, I got hurt. I was on the sideline and, and watching and learning. And, and I discovered that that was a part of the game that I enjoyed. So she kind of fell into it after she was hurt. Yeah, she was a grad assistant. She was an assistant at Arizona State for a few seasons. Had one semester with Jason Watson, the head coach now, said she has so much admiration for him, really considers him a mentor and she said I wanted to play for this kind of conference I wanted to play at this level and this kind of competition there you see Moretta Letts six foot eight red shirt freshman middle blocker making her presence felt number 17 right there no doubt she was certainly a candidate for freshman of the year in the conference it was a first team member, and that time they'll say she catches the back line, so they're just going to keep going to Moretta Lutz in the middle. Well, the offensive range that a six foot eight hitter has, she can hit the ball straight down, but look, here she uses the back part of the court. Lutz and Mary Kate Marshall from Oregon State, two of the most talented freshmen. Mary Kate Marshall did get the Freshman of the Year award, but no doubt Lutz has been an award winner for the Cardinal this season as. Bakersfield's not going away. Haynes with the serve. Bug goes back to Bo Cather. Back set to O'Hagan, the slide off the block and the point to the Roadrunners. Louisa Martin's number 14 in blue running a really nice offense and likes to go to Molly O'Hagan off one foot. They've had a lot of success attacking from the right side against Stanford. 
Megan McGee is checked in for the Cardinal. 6-2 junior middle. And the service too long for Sidney Haynes. So the point will go to Stanford. Sophie Fleming will come back in for Bakersfield and Burgess will go back to serve. And a short serve. Youngblood got there. Brittany Howard, Cardinal really mixing it up well. Brittany Howard and Kyle Gilbert ran into each other. Don't know if Kyle Gilbert cut her lip or not, but they, yeah, it looks like she might have had a good collision or a bad collision. Tough play to handle there. O'Hagan started it. And they try to go with the slide and she just couldn't quite make it. Brittany Howard has been very good blocking for Stanford, way over the net, very disciplined, turning her hands back into the court. Big swing from Sawyer. They wanted the touch. They won't get it. It goes long, and it's going to stay with Stanford. Kelsey Sawyer not afraid to swing hard, trying to go high hands to that corner. Just does not get a piece of the Stanford block. Some solid serving from Jordan Burgess. And that time, Kelsey Sawyer catches the back line. The junior out of Temecula. Watch this replay. The setter for Bakersfield isolated Kelsey Sawyer on the outside, only one blocker in front of her. That's a fantastic play if you're a setter. That is your goal. Louisa Martin's able to find Kelsey Sawyer. She knew exactly where to go. Good decision making by the setter. Martin's this time out to Youngblood down the line. A point to Bakersfield. It looked like Maddie Bug was surprised that Danica Youngblood number white could turn this ball down the line. Hands were not even up. I'm surprised too, that's a pretty impressive line swing. Back set, big swing, and McGee off the block will take the point. Megan McGee is a solid middle attacker. Moretta Letts kind of beat her out early in the season for the spot, but she's the best server in terms of aces on this Stanford team and now she's getting a chance to play some front row as well. Yeah, fourth in the conference in service aces. 29 for her on the season and there's the play Molly O'Hagan was waiting for. Continued success for Bakersfield attacking the right side of the net, the left side of Stanford's defense. McGee will get a little breather. Ajanaku back in and that'll send O'Hagan back to serve. Tough serve to handle and catch in the back line. Good hustle from Jordan Burgess to keep that one going. Good play by Brittany Howard in system, getting on top of that ball, hitting the back line. Morgan Bocather back to serve for Stanford. Just wiping up a little bit of sweat off the court. Got very quiet in here, Holly. Some of the crowd getting into things. And a service error. Morgan Bocather maybe had to wait a little too long. Yeah, the energy got quiet. Bakersfield is playing well. Stanford's stepped up their game in the second set for sure. Louisa Martins back to serve. She's 15 in the nation in assists per set. She led the whack in that category, and I can see why as the tip goes wide from Ajanaku, and Bakersfield is still in this. Inki Ajanaku just trying to be too cute on the little shot. Just got to go up and hammer that. They cannot stop her. There's Martins again, a junior college All-American. Picking up where she left off with those accolades in the whack. Bug outside to Howard who took some off. Nice up there from Alvy Drez. 
And there's Danica Youngblood again, hard off the block and out of bounds. It goes to the Roadrunners. And defense is what's keeping Bakersfield alive, able to swing through this block, cooling the block. But it was the defense that kept the ball alive and gave them that opportunity for a kill. Burgess a nice up. Youngblood again, this time the block able to keep it going. Backs up to Haynes. There's Maddie Bug, we hadn't seen that. This match, the dump gets the point. Jordan Burgess dug that ball perfectly. Look right in Maddie Bug's hand, she has all her options. Everyone's thinking, where's Inky going? Where's Brittany going? Boom, I'm gonna call my number, I like that. Youngblood, hard shot there, finds the opening, and the Roadrunners will take it back. Inky Ajanaku, the middle blocker for Sanford, needs to go outside. She's bailing, leaving one-on-one. -on -one. And Danica Youngblood, big swing cross-court for Bakersfield. She was part of the national runner-up team in 2012 for Western Nebraska Community College, playing for Coach Mello. Miscommunication in the back line for the Cardinal. And the free ball will go to Bakersfield. There's Sawyer, big swing. Kelsey Sawyer with the finish. Kelsey Sawyer, 10 kills on 25 swings. Big, powerful swing, and she's finding good location. This is out of system with a huge block in front of her. John Dunning wants the timeout. He wants to slow down the runners. And they've got some momentum going right now. Bakersfield hanging around, and it's because of their defense. Really impressed keeping the ball alive, discipline, blocking, picking up balls. They're a fun team to watch. Coach Mello told us, she said, we have to play good defense. That's a big key for us. And she said, we also have to be unafraid. We got to go in with some confidence. And it's maybe not quite the same level as playing the number one seed, but this is a team that had to face the team, New Mexico State, that knocked them out of the tournament in the WAC last year, faced them, got the win. They go on and they win the WAC tournament. So they've had some situations throughout this year that they've been in some tough spots. People have counted them out. They were the three seed in the tournament. No one thought they'd be here. Well, and that's what Coach Mello told us. She said, you know what? We've had some challenges. This might be a little bit bigger, but we've been overcoming these types of obstacles all season long. It's a system that she would love to see a little faster. She wants that fast pace. She brings that international flair. But this team has definitely, in her first season, they have definitely bought in to what she's bringing to the program. Defensively, Bakersfield with 32 digs compared to Stanford's 25. But then the advantage at the net, 12 blocks for Stanford, only four for Bakersfield. That is a big difference for Giovanna Mello's team at the net. AUC Cesar Benacci, her assistant as well. He's been playing and working the blocking game in practice against this team because it's not a big Bakersfield team. He's been practicing against the team, and that's an advantage at times when you get somebody like that with his experience to go against. Well, that helps your practice for sure in preparing for a foe like Stanford. You need all the help you can get. Yeah, they don't have a big rotation, but Coach Mello told us they're a hardworking group. She gives all the credit to them. As we'll see if the Cardinal can regroup here. John Dunning called that timeout and catching the sideline. It stays with Bakersfield. Credit the libero, Mariah Alvidrez, with a big dig on the Jordan Burgess hammer. And then Bakersfield able to score in transition. Alvidrez, the redshirt senior, she's third all time in digs, coming in over 1,500 in her career. Ajanaku, big swing. There's Sawyer, who's been hot. And the block that time, throwing off the Roadrunners. It's going to go to the Cardinal. Inky Ajanaku way over the net for Stanford. And, and Bakersfield keeping alive, covering just a, a ball handling error on their side of the net. Inky gets a breather. Kyle Gilbert back to serve. And Inky rolling her eyes a little bit with frustration. 
Adjustment there from Haynes, and it just goes long. And for Bakersfield, they thought it was their point. Instead, set point to the Cardinal. Sawyer, tough angle from her and Bakersfield not giving up. Kelsey Sawyer just continues to impress 13 kills, hitting a sharper angle than you think possible in that particular swing. Set point number two for Stanford with Alvy Drez back and the serve. Back set to McGee, but the block was waiting. Kelsey Sawyer and Molly O'Hagan, 15 in the middle for Bakersfield. Megan McGee, very offensive-minded and good slide hitter, and Bakersfield able to slow her down. Off the top of the tape, the serve from Alvy Drez, outside to Burgess, and found the opening to finish off set two. And there's Jordan Burgess finishing it off. She is what I call the glue on this Stanford team. She does the little things, passing six rotations, just so good all around for Stanford. Sometimes you forget about a player like Jordan Burgess and then she comes in and will finish things off. You're absolutely right. And coming up at our, on our intermission report, Adam Kohler will be in our Pac-12 Network studios talking about the NCAA women's second round action as well as the College Cup semifinals for Stanford. And we are joined now by the head coach of the Stanford Cardinal, John Dunning. And John, your team able to finish off and, and go up two sets to none, but this Bakersfield team, they're bringing everything they can. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. They're actually really fun to watch. I like watching them on tape and everything. They're really good. They get a lot out of what they're doing. Their setter is driving us crazy right now. It's different and we're not adapting and we kind of hung on there because we did a few things well. Yeah, they're really good. That's fun to watch. After the first set, what did you tell your team to focus on? Well, we're trying to get our block located because we gotten faked out by their setter 10 times right now, our middle going totally the wrong direction. But the key is our right sides against their outside hitters trying to locate and be big enough, and we're not being very disciplined. Um, I, we're going to go back in and talk about that because we can take up a lot of court with one blocker even if we get faked out, and we're not. We did a couple at the end there, and we got them. But that's the key for us right now, I think, is our block being a lot better, a lot more disciplined. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Coach. We appreciate the time. Thank you. All right, John Dunning's team up two sets to none, but some areas to clean up. Not quite where they want to be. Bakersfield hanging tough. We'll be back after the intermission report for you and have set three after this on Pac-12 Networks. This is GoRVing.com. Hey there, I'm Adam Kohler with your Pac-12 Network's Intermission Report. We'll get you right back out to Bakersfield Stanford in a moment. But first, let's take a look at some of the second round matchups that wrapped up earlier today. Oregon advancing in the opening round after their third straight year. A sweep over Santa Clara doing that. Now squaring off against LSU. First set, Ducks up 13-9. Martin Bettendorf gets the set on X and puts away the kill. Bettendorf with 18 kills on the night. Oregon takes the first 25-22. They split the next two sets. Fourth match. Oregon point here and Brianna Holman launches this one out and Oregon wins three sets to one advancing to the third round. All right, how about BYU taking on number 11 Arizona. We pick up the action in the first set all even at 18 when Maddie Kingdon comes into the screen and gets the transition kill off the high swing. Kingdon with 33 kills, 23 digs. Wildcats take the first, 25-22. BYU though would take the second and third set. Match point for the Cougs, Kingdon. Swings it into the net and BYU pulls off the upset. Three sets to one. They take on FSU in the third round. Some more scores that wrapped up from the Pac-12 in the opening round. USC, Utah, Oregon State, and Colorado all advancing. We got one late score for you in the second round. Arizona State falling to number two, Texas. Three sets to none. All right, well, Stanford looking good so far, up two games to nothing, looking for the sweep of Bakersfield. We'll bring you back out to Maples Pavilion in just a moment, but right now, let's take a quick break and come back with your Pac-12 Sports Update. Oh, 
Hello and welcome back into our San Francisco studios. I'm Adam Kohler with your Pac-12 Sports Report update. It's tournament time across the NCAA as national championship contenders begin to separate themselves from the pack. And in women's soccer, the field is down to the final two now as Stanford and Florida State squared off to the right to face Virginia in the championship match. The Cardinal fired up. They're playing in their sixth college cup in the past seven seasons, but it's Florida State off to the quick start. 16 minutes in, Shayna Williams. Just inside the box, her 13th goal of the season, 1-0 Seminole. Second half, same score. Stanford on the attack. Chioma Abagagu gets a good shot, but Kristen Crowley slides in for the stop, and the Cardinals still looking for that elusive first goal. Four minutes left to go in regulation. Here comes Florida State. It's Williams getting around Campbell, and Florida State knocks off the Cardinal 2-0. Right, meanwhile, in the men's tournament, UCLA has their sights set on advancing to the College Cup. But standing in their way are the North Carolina Tar Heels. It's a rematch of an early season meeting when the Bruins escaped Chapel Hill with a 1-0 win. Now obviously the stakes much higher this time around and should expect a hard-fought game on this one. You can catch all the action live on the Pac-12 Network tomorrow at 5 o'clock. All right, part of a busy Saturday slate. It all starts with Washington State hoops at noon. Then the women take over hosting SMU at 2 at 7 and 7.30. Assuming the top seeds advance, there's your volleyball matchups. Hey, thanks for watching the Pac-12 Sports Report update. We'll get you back to your match right after this short timeout. Back here, the first round of the NCAA tournament at Maples Pavilion and the Stanford Cardinal up two sets to none, but it is a close one facing Bakersfield. And we are joined now by the head coach of the Roadrunners, Giovanna Mello. And Coach, you told us coming into this one, you wanted your team to not be afraid coming in. You wanted them to have some confidence. Did you feel like they had some confidence? It sure looked like it in sets one and two. Yeah, I did. You know, they came out not as strong as I want them to, but I think that throughout the game, the nervous, I guess, little jitters get out and, and they're playing a little bit better. But I think we have more in the tank for sure. Well, you've been able to hold Stanford to only hitting 200. Are you happy so far with the kind of defense you guys are playing? You know, I'm a coach. I'm never happy, but I, I want them to get a little bit better uh, as, the as the match goes on. And right now, hopefully, we can put a little bit more pressure. Giovanna, you're giving us a good one. We appreciate the time. Thanks very much. Thank you. The Roadrunners definitely representing the WAC tournament champs, and they are holding their own. They find themselves in a tough spot here against Stanford as we take a look at the numbers. You mentioned the hitting percentage, and you might think it's very uneven, but Stanford, a team coming in, hits 316, so 206. Yes, 206 is 100 points plus under their average, but they've been able to hold Bakersfield to point zero six zero, and the difference has been blocks 13 to 5 in favor of Stanford, who's big at the net. They were a little bit more disciplined in that second set and it paid off big for Stanford although Bakersfield has been hanging around keeping it close they have done a very good job with their digs out digging the Cardinal but that blocking game has been big and and there you see Brittany Howard and the numbers tonight nobody in double figures as far as kills go for Stanford but two players for Bakersfield already hitting double figures so but how about the balance? I guess that's the thing that Stanford really has, so many different options. Balance. They can hurt you from so many different locations. And you see, balance is really important because the defense that's facing you really has to be ready for anybody to hurt you. We are so happy to be covering the first round of the NCAA tournament here on Pac-12 Networks. And we appreciate you joining us as out of the break, Bakersfield, they start things off here in set three, taking the first point. Alvidrez back to serve. I've been impressed with the redshirt senior libero. Back set to Bo Cather and the blocking game now picking up for the Roadrunners. Molly O'Hagan and Danica Youngblood big at the net. Morgan Bo Cather just kind of eased up a little bit trying to kind of attack the seam but Youngblood all over that for Bakersfield. Ajanaku the quick there and the block not quite there for Bakersfield to go to the Cardinal. Bakersfield is trying to put two blockers up on the middle attack from Stanford. They were right there in the right location, did not press over the net and execute proper blocking technique. Quick to O'Hagan gets the touch. It goes right back to Bakersfield. You know, it's something that it's hard for the TV crowd to see, but Louisa Martins, number 14, the setter for Bakersfield, is doing a great job running the offense and faking out 
the Stanford defense and middle blockers. When we, when we talked to John Dunning, that's exactly what he mentioned was how well she's doing. There's Martins right there out to Youngblood, but the block was waiting, and that was John, what John Dunning said. Our block needs to adjust to what she's doing. Yeah, she, she runs it fast in front of her, runs it fast behind her, keeping the middle blockers trying to guess. 15th in the nation in assists per set. She led the WAC in that category. And in just her first season, over 1,300 career assists. Trying to dump that one over and a smile on her face. Won't get it. And we are tied up here in set three. She says, my fault. Next play. Just her first season, she transferred from Western Nebraska along with Coach Mello this past year. Pretty impressive what she's done in one season. Big swing from Youngblood. Kyle Gilbert keeps it up. Slide to O'Hagan. No touch. It'll go to the Cardinal. That ball set a little bit wide, but Molly O'Hagan just... Could not keep it in play. Gets out past the antenna. Too sharp. Serve from Howard. Outside to Youngblood. And it's out into the Cardinal. Couple too many errors in a row for Bakersfield. Stanford just rolling at the beginning of this third set. You have to play your best ball when you're playing a team like Stanford. Really can't afford many errors. Youngblood will get a chance again, catches the back line, and it'll go to the Roadrunners. Impressive swing by Danica Youngblood. Only five foot seven, elevating, taking it down the line, finding the back line. The junior college All-American coming out of Western Nebraska, first team All-WAC member this year. You can see why. Inky tips it over and nobody can get there. Point to Stanford. That time Inky Ajanaku takes care of the ball, makes sure it goes in the court, drops right over the block. Everyone's thinking hammer and then a little finesse shot that drops for Stanford. Two point lead for the Cardinal. The serve from Gilbert just off the top of the net. And that's set a little too low for Molly O'Hagan. It'll go to the Cardinal. Well, it's tough off, off a broken pass off the tape. Little out of system play. A lot of pressure on Bakersfield. It's the Cardinal extending their lead here in set three. Coach Mello wants to try to slow down John Dunning's Stanford Cardinal. Pac-12 Women's Volleyball is presented by Tachikara. We've got the ball. You bring the game. University Ave. It's a great place to stroll, do a little shopping. You might have been down there today, Holly. I'm not sure, but it's just up the road from Stanford, and the Cardinal took the first two sets. They have a three-point lead here in set three of the first round of the NCAA tournament. And some of the Bakersfield fans have made their way. It's just about 100 miles north of Los Angeles and in the San Joaquin Valley. Winners of the WAC tournament and got the automatic bid in the NCAA tournament. It's their first trip to the NCAA tournament, a program that was Division II up until 2007. Last year was the first year they were in the WAC conference. They were not in a conference prior to that. They were an independent, just playing and pairing up. There's enough teams where you could match up, but they stepped into the WAC, did very well, and did very well this year as out of the timeout, there's Kelsey Sawyer. Again, 13th kill number seven in blue. Both outside hitters have been very impressive for Bakersfield, but this is obviously a volleyball program moving in the right direction. Great first year coach, great young talent. It's fun to see. It definitely is. Stanford goes to the back and Bo Cather and the free ball to the Cardinal. Lutz has to tip that one over. There's Sawyer taking some off and right at the line judge, out of bounds. It'll go to Stanford. Corner ball got the linesman right in the head. He was trying to dodge it. Too much heat on it. Quick reflexes, though. Better than mine earlier, but <laughs> he is out there exercising, and I am sitting. So They'll try Sawyer again. The block reading much better, I think, for Stanford this set. 
Well, it's, it's all about discipline, being in the right location, really pressing over, sealing the net. Morgan Bocather closest to us, way over the net. Beretta Letts closes it for Stanford. Serve for Maddie Bug. Back set to Johnson. And just getting it over was Howard. And how about the fake out there? Once again, Louisa Martins. Well, Moretta Lutz is for Stanford was standing there, just did not leave the ground, and Louisa Martins aggressively throws it down for Bakersfield. Martins is just a junior. This Bakersfield team will have her back next year. At the top of the net, Bocather has to hustle. Sawyer with the tip, finds the opening, and it works. What a decision from Kelsey Sawyer. 14 kills for number seven right there. This is a out of system play, smart, deep line tip by Sawyer. Over a thousand career kills for Kelsey Sawyer. Just a junior, she'll be back as well for this team next year. What's in the middle? Roadrunners keep it alive. Everybody a little out of system on this. Burgess, and the block was ready. Bakersfield takes the point. Bakersfield was barely able to get that ball over the net, but in transition, a huge block that Megan Johnson for Bakersfield, number nine in blue. So a timeout called by John Dunning. He wants to regroup and settle his team down. And we mentioned earlier some of the award winners, Maddie Bug, the setter for the Stanford Cardinal, two-time setter of the year. Let's take a look at all of the award winners this year. Pretty impressive what Mary-Kate Marshall did in her freshman season. Cassie Strickland, the Pac-12 libero of the year. There you see Maddie Bug, the setter of the year, and Krista. Vincent, the two-time Pac-12 Player of the Year and also last year the National Player of the Year. Really fun to watch and this player is as well. Maddie Bug, the junior setter out of Apex, North Carolina. And she was a second team All-American last year. She was part of the first team All-Pac-12 this year. And she's really that player, John Dunning. He has so much praise for her, and she's really running the show out there. Well, the junior class for Stanford is so impressive. You've got Maddie Bug, Brittany Howard, Jordan Burgess, Inky Ajanaku. I'm probably forgetting one other, Megan McGee. I mean, the, just the talent there in that junior class. I remember when they came in, it was like, wow, they're going to be good for a long time. Yeah, five high school All-Americans coming in. They were the number one recruit class in the nation. And John Dunning, even as freshman, he's uh, had to start him. He didn't know really, even though he knew how talented they were, could they start at this level as freshmen, and they definitely did. Let's go, Louisa Martins is back to serve for Bakersfield. They are down just one here in set three. See if the Cardinal can make some adjustments. Extend their lead. Burgess off the block. And there's Alvidrez again, the libero keeping it alive. Lutz in the middle, straight down. There's a better connection between Maddie Bug and Moretta Lutz. Last couple swings, they haven't got a full connection, but this time, kill for Stanford. Jordan Burgess back to serve. Martins is back to Haynes. And they're going to call, I believe, a net violation. And that is disappointing as we see Brittany Howard down on the court. She's in some pain. It's left ankle. She points mm. to the trainer, left ankle. Tried to. Looks like she came down on the hitter and rolled her ankle. So unfortunate this time of the year. And she knew it. It's hard to watch as a ankle sprain victim over the oh. years. I can definitely feel the pain. It is so quiet in here. Hopefully it's tape or there's some type of support on it that can minimize the impact of the sprain and she can get back out here for Stanford soon. 
not putting much weight on it at this point. And I certainly hope it. it's maybe just a little scarier than it really is, you hope. And it's a good sign to see her walking. And Brittany Howard's going to hobble off. And you can just see, I think she's frustrated just more than anything because she knows this is not, not good timing. Well, I thought she had a really good match so far. And, and it looks like she's putting some decent weight on it. So hopefully with some strong tape, she can continue to play. It's a good sign. Looks like they're going to check it out. And we want to welcome those of you who've been watching Washington and New Hampshire. Krista Blanc along with Holly McPeak here at Maples Pavilion in the Stanford Cardinal took the first two sets and they have a three point lead here in set three, but Bakersfield has been quite a challenge. It's been a good match so far. And there we take a look at the brackets. Washington gets the win over New Hampshire. They will face Hawaii tomorrow. Utah, Nebraska also in that bracket. Washington is the regional host. And we just recently saw Brittany Howard go out of the match with, with what we think is a ankle injury, the left ankle, and hopefully it's something minimal. And John Dunning goes to his bench. He's over on the sideline. The trainer now checking it out. And he's brought in Ivana Vonyak, the redshirt freshman. We haven't seen her play this entire season. We haven't. She's from Germany, speaks multiple languages. And obviously it was Sydney Brown first off the bench for Stanford early in the season, but it looks like she's got the call. There you see Ivana Vonyak. Redshirted last year. Her sister Anna played volleyball at Cornell. So how about some minutes? You get your first minutes in the NCAA tournament. Not bad. Young blood off the block. Nice get from Burgess. Vonyak just tried to readjust the set a little off the mark to her, and the point will go to Bakersfield. Well, Ivana Vonyak has not played, so she's coming in cold, so tough to take swings against a scrappy defense when you're not warm. It definitely is as Al Vidrez will go back to serve. Redshirt senior libero. Tough serve. Burgess off the mark and in the middle O'Hagan. It comes back to them and it goes wide. It's point to Bakersfield. Kyle Gilbert dug that overpass swing but Bakersfield makes them pay on the second one. Raya Alvarez back to serve again. Started her college career playing soccer. And there's Bo Cather who will break her serve. Awesome right side attack by Morgan Bo Cather. And credit Maddie Bug. Watch how you didn't get to see that set, but so fast to the right side. No block in front of her. Nobody in Morgan Bo Cather's way as she serves it up there. Back set to Haynes, and it works. The right side attack from Bakersfield has been great all night long. A lot of success off one foot behind the setter. Sydney Haynes, the red shirt freshman out of Vancouver, Washington. Outside that time, Vanyak connects and she'll get the kill. Smile on her face. Always good to get that first kill under your belt. She has been playing some back row lately for Stanford, but this time, good, quick, in-system set by Maddie Bug. Gets her that first kill. Vanyak with the serve. Martin sends it over to Youngblood, hard off the block, and Bakersfield will take it back. Two-point lead for the Cardinal. This is Youngbud's 13th kill. High, hard off of Maddie Bug's hands for a Bakersfield kill. Sarah Benjamin checks in now for Stanford, the 5'8 freshman defensive specialist out of San Diego. Bug takes the second ball. Bakersfield keeps it alive. Flemian kept that one going. And Jonathan right at Alvidrez. 
Burgess. The tempo has definitely picked up for Stanford right here. Somehow Bakersfield's been hanging on, but just wide as Kelsey Sawyer. Good rallies on both sides there. Stanford offensively so good. They're not used to seeing the ball continue to come back at them swing after swing, but Bakersfield keeping it alive defensively. Kyle Gilbert, we've been impressed with both liberos in this match for certain. There's Alvarez. And Hagen had to readjust. Well, Hagen tried to tip it over Moretta Lutz. The size advantage there pays off for the Cardinal. Moretta Lutz does not even have to leave the ground on that one. Good instincts to swat it. Her hands are up, little throwback for Stanford. At 6'8", John Dunning said she has such a big window, we can set her. She can adjust her arm so quickly, and a big arm and big swing there from Kelsey Sawyer. We talked to John Dunning at the break. Watch what the setter does to the middle blocker for Stanford. Just freezes Moretta Lutz, one blocker in front of Kelsey Sawyer. That's when you know you're doing your job as a setter. She has been impressive, Lutz. And a good effort there from O'Hagan, but too much on it. And now a four-point lead by the Cardinal. Retta Letts with her seventh kill. Bug just trickles that one over, and she'll take it. 13th ace of the season. Good sign for Stanford as Brittany Howard makes her way back to the sideline. Went out with the ankle earlier, and that is a very good sign. She's not limping or walking gingerly, so I know for me, if I sprain my ankle, it's back to normal in about five minutes because it's happened so many times. <laughs> so hopefully Mine's for her. the same way. I don't know what mine are even made up anymore. As we take a look at the bracket, this group right here will try to make their way to Iowa State. The Ames Regional Oregon State's going to face, how about Arkansas Little Rock knocking off Kansas earlier. They will face the Beavers of Oregon State who beat Creighton. And then we saw Michigan State beat LMU earlier. They are awaiting the winners here. And if the Stanford Cardinal can finish it off, it looks as though it will be them. But what a match we've had. Well, I'll tell you, Kansas losing to Arkansas Little Rock, that has to be the upset of the tournament so far. Yeah, definitely the 16 seed Kansas Jayhawks knocked out the tree always excited to be part of the tournament fans have come out as well there's been a lot going on with the Pac-12 football championship taking place I think we're a little bit better off inside here though at Maples Pavilion Holly <laughs> it's a little bit a little bit of a rainy situation outside a little bit more comfortable in here absolutely and I think the Cardinal Getting a little more comfortable with a five-point lead here in set three. Bakersfield has definitely been holding their own. So Maddie Bug getting the ace prior to the timeout. It was actually her 22nd on the season. That shot will go wide. It'll stay with Stanford. Maddie Bug just really controls her emotions. Not a super emotional setter. Yeah! Uh, Sawyer continues to take the big swings that time off the block, and Bakersfield will take it back. Kelsey Sawyer so aggressive. She swings hard at that ball. That's her 17th kill. Just a junior. She will be back next year for this Bakersfield team. There's just four seniors on this team. So a lot to look forward to for them. We mentioned the ties of Coach Mello, former setter at Arizona State. Dave Rubio of Arizona was the former coach of this Bakersfield team when they were a Division II program, won a national championship back in 1989 with them. So it's a Pac-12 ties to this team, this program. And they're not going away. Get the point there, and Martins will go back to serve. Pass a little off the mark to Bug and the free ball. Burgess 
Big swing, got every bit of that one. Jordan Burgess has been doing a lot for Stanford tonight, but that's only her fourth kill. Does not feel like it. Seven digs for Burgess, though, so doing other things. Well, that's the nice thing about having so much balance, so many different weapons. You don't always have to be the big kill winner for Stanford. There's so many girls who can do it. And there you see Moretta Lutz way over the net for Stanford. Sawyer, thinking I put everything behind that one. Not easy to get it around Moretta Lutz at 6'8". And the wingspan and the timing that's come together for her this year. The block waiting for Haynes on that one. Point to Stanford. Stanford looking more and more comfortable all the time. Moretta Lutz really making her presence felt offensively and defensively. Cardinal have never lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament. They are trying to keep it that way. Vonyak, big swing. We are at match point for Stanford. Ivana Vonyak, second kill for Stanford. Puts them in a good spot. Crowd on their feet with Burgess back to serve. Haynes off the slide. Almost a whiff there by Lutz, but gets a fingertip on it. Lutz will set it. Sawyer, big swing, and Bakersfield stays alive. A little miscue up front. Well, no, actually, somebody slipped in the sweat. Sydney Haynes, number 13, hit a wet spot and went down. Thank goodness she didn't get hurt. But again, number seven, Kelsey Sawyer, 18 kills. So impressive tonight for Bakersfield. Coming off of the 14-kill match in their win against Seattle U in the WAC Tournament Championship match. She's been solid. Aaron Riley with the serve. Match point again, but stuffed at the net by the block of Bakersfield. Bakersfield not giving up. This is a team that's playing with passion and having a lot of fun, you can tell. Match point number three for the Cardinal. Lutz in the middle and the finish. So the number one seed keeps going and they get the sweep, but it was not an easy one to this Bakersfield team. Give credit to Bakersfield, who played hard, had a fantastic season, and went out swinging. The 17th 30-plus winning season in school history for Stanford. And they will go on to face Michigan State tomorrow night. We will have that for you right here on Pac-12 Networks. Stanford only hit 226, but was able to advance in this match with a 3-0 victory over Bakersfield. The winner of that one tomorrow night will head to the regionals. They will head to Ames, Iowa. The Cardinal would love to get themselves there. They could potentially face another Pac-12 foe, Oregon State, as they will face Arkansas Little Rock tomorrow as well. That's going to do it for us here from Maples Pavilion. The Stanford Cardinal, the number one seed. They get the sweep over Bakersfield for David Feldman, our producer, our director, Jeff Butler. And for Holly McPeak, I'm Krista Blanc. You've been watching Pac-12 Volleyball on Pac-12 Networks. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow night for round two. We now join.